In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the 30th day of the month of Abib, so it's the last day of the month. Coptic months, they don't have 31 days like um, uh, the usual calendar Bitaitna. It's one, uh, one month, 30 days only, and then at the end of the year, we have a small month that consists of four or five days, which is coming up soon. This month, we're about to start tomorrow, which is Misra, is the last month of the Coptic year. So today I would like to talk to you about a summary of the readings of the Sundays of the month of Abib, this month that ends today. The first Sunday, the readings talked about how Christ talked to his disciples, the 12 disciples and his disciples at large, that he's sending them as sheep among wolves. And this is the core invitation of our belief. We don't repay evil for evil, an insult for an insult, aggression for aggression. We repay evil with good. This is how Christ wanted us to handle our daily life, which is not easy. He also asked us to love our enemies and to bless those who curse us. This is not an easy thing to do. However, this is the only way to live as a Christian person. The more we practice this, the more we practice to bless those who curse against us, the more we practice how to love our enemies, the more we realize that whoever I call an enemy is not really an enemy. We have friends, we have acquaintances, we have people we know, and we have people that are strangers. Sometimes this stranger is someone just generic in my eyes. With the first conflict, this stranger can turn into an enemy. So what I really call or label as an enemy, I need to revisit this. Sometimes even people that are close to us, with the first conflict, we start to develop negative feelings toward them and we start to feel resentment, which is dangerous. This is not how we are called to live. These negative feelings, they hurt us more than anyone else. This aggression against us is good for us sometimes. I'm not saying to accept it, I'm saying that we don't repay evil with evil. Those who do evil to us, we plus them back. Ask yourself always, how can I, if, if you have that question, how can I love my enemy or how can I bless those who do evil to me? A few steps that might help us how to do this. We switch places. We switch places with them. See if we were in their shoes, what would we have done? And ask yourself, if you were in his uh, place, what would you love people to do to you? And whatever your answer is, do to them. This is what we know as the golden rule. Do to people, what would you love them do to you? The step two is that you seek to understand before you're understood. The problem sometimes we create conflicts for no reason because we think we understand and we don't. So a good advice for that, seek to understand before you're understood. Number three, be slow to defend yourself because no one really is attacking you. Most of the time the conflicts happen because we think people are attacking and that's not the case. Be slow to defend be slow to judge. When you do this, you give yourself a chance to think, to understand the situation in a better way. Step four is to do good. Do good to them. Why? Why would I do good to someone who is paying me evil? I should pay them back with the same currency, right? No, wrong. I do good not because they deserve it. Most likely they don't deserve it. I do good because they need it. I do good because I need it. I need to do good. I need to live in light. If I do evil 
to those who pay me evil, then when am I going to see light? I will not be able to see light. This is the first Sunday readings of Habib. And the second Sunday talked about the undefiled and the way. The world is full of sins, temptations. The disciples came to Christ asking him, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They didn't really care much of the kingdom of heaven as much as they cared for who is really the most superior among them. They weren't asking about the kingdom, they were asking about superiority among the disciples. And Christ told them, you need to, unless you return into back to children and accept the kingdom of God as children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Children are easy to submit. They listen. That's why the second, the second readings was directly, um, or the first reading was about, or the first Sunday was about how to love your enemies. The third Sunday, feeding the multitude, the disciples came to Christ. I'm, I'm thinking um, Christ asked them to live among, uh, like sheep among wolves, and then asked them to turn into children. And in the feeding of the multitude, they asked him, please send the people away so they can find something to eat. And he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we don't have enough. I, I see it on a much bigger scale that he asked them to live as sheep among wolves and turn into children. And they came to him and was like, I, 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 can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. And to be honest, to tell you the truth, it's not easy. It's not easy to not to repay evil by evil. It's not easy to turn into children and submit and accept. But the answer is, I come before Christ. I have a problem that I need to fix, which is feeding the multitude. How am I going to feed them? What am I offering to them? What I have to offer is not enough. And they asked, we only have this much. We have five loaves of bread and two fish. And sometimes this is what we need to do. What's requested of me is too much. What I have is too little. I, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. The answer is to bring it before him. Tell him this is what I have. And just ex expect him to take it from here. That's what he does. When the disciples were feeding the multitude, they keep thinking back, reflecting, how is that possible that the five loaves of bread and two fish are feeding 5,000 people? It's not possible. But with his grace, with his blessings, everything is possible. What we offer to our kids on a different level is not good morals. That's not what we offer to our kids. This is what the world offers to their kids. What we offer to our kids is the Christian teachings. And Christian teachings are not just good morals. Good morals are very limited to bring, a good, bring up a good Christians. And then last Sunday was the reading that we heard about raising Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus died and Christ went to raise him up from the death. When he asked, where did you put him? Mariam and Martha said to him, Lord, come and see. And sometimes this is what we need to do. An invitation for God for Christ to come and see our lives. There's not much really I can say here about my life. You know exactly how it looks like, how it is difficult, how it is complicated, how it is stressful sometimes. Lord, come and see. We don't know how he will act, but we know for sure that whenever he goes, wherever he goes, he brings light with him. And I need to live in that light. At least, at least, I live with him. And that's enough. What about everything else? Everything else can come later. Work problems, family problems, personal problems, whatever problems, temptation, sins. If you live in light, you will be able to take care of everything else. But if you live in darkness, you will not be able to see to fix your life in any way. Lord, come and see. May God enlighten our life with his presence to him's glory forever and ever. Amen.